Hey, yo, it's DJ Khaled. Hey, this is Kim Kardashian. I'm Chuck the Ice Van Liddell. Hey, I'm Scott Storch. What up, y'all? This is Fat Joe. This is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you're watching Before the Fame. Before the Fame. Before the Fame. Before the Fame. Mike Sherman. Don't ever stop. Everybody starts somewhere. These are their stories. Before the Fame. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Before the Fame. And I'm your host, Mike Sherman. Today's show is on former NFL defensive lineman and current UFC fighter, Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy is here and Breeze gets up limping. Greg wasn't only a demolition man on Sundays when he played in the NFL, he's also a raging fighter in the UFC. I ain't trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. My life been good and bad and all around. I'm all things I love. The ground was shaking, and I, like, from me to you, I couldn't hear you. Flags are down, and tempers flare again. What's amazing about Greg is the fact that, you know, we're still discovering so much about him. I'm a competitor. Like, I have to be the best. I wanted, I wanted that yellow jacket, the Hall of Fame, and to not be able to chase that anymore was hurt. It's not how you start in life, it's how you finish. A lot of us, we all have demons. We all have issues. It's how we deal with them. I see Greg going to the top. Greg Hardy was born on July 28, 1988 in Millington, Tennessee. It all started when you were a kid in Tennessee. Tell me about you finally endeavoring into football as a young man. You know, started off uh, like when I was eight, man. Just riding the bike from the trailer park to the field, getting it in early, and just kind of took off, you know, I fell in love with it. Greg had the love for sports at a young age, but was not a natural athlete, and had to put in many hours to build the skills needed to excel. It was a long road, man. Started, I started off with one, as one of those hard work guys, you know, didn't really uh, have the initial talent, was a skinny guy, if you can believe it. So you were skinny? Oh, yeah, I was a bas basketball player skinny. Okay, so you're a <laughs> basketball player, now you get to high school, and you're starting to fill out, and you're starting to excel. When did you know that you were gifted and you were special? You know, in, uh, in high school, I kind of started moving out into different sports, running track, playing football, basketball, just moving around, man. And, the more I got it, the more, you know, I put my time into it, the better I realized I was getting. Was your dad in your life as a child? Yes, sir. And was he a good role model? Oh, yeah. My, my dad's one of the guys that made me. You know, he's uh, always instilled that athletic mentality inside of me in, in everything. Was he hard do. on you? Oh, for sure, man. We were in the park touching the backboard because, believe it or not, I was like 6'1 and couldn't dunk, 6'2. And he was like, no. Nah. So he took me outside, touching the backboard 100 times. Until, until I could get it a hundred times in the rain, it was thunder and lightning, couldn't go home kind of stuff. You know, same on the football field, same on the baseball field, same on the track. After a great high school career, Hardy was recruited to play football and basketball for the University of Mississippi, Ole Miss. You know, those are some of the biggest, most epic games. You know, 100,000 people playing in Death Valley, man. I, I think that was bigger than any NFL game I've ever played. That's you know, incredible. You could literally, the ground was shaking and I, like, from me to you, I couldn't hear you. I think that was my first year coming in playing receiver. I caught five, six touchdowns at receiver. Yeah, you were a receiver. Yeah. You're, a big, you're three, almost, you know, 275, you know, 6'5". I mean, <laughs> but you, run a, you ran a 4'7", right? It was like, a, and yeah, in college, I ran like a 4'6", 4'7". That's incredible. After graduating Ole Miss, Hardy was drafted in the sixth round of the 2010 NFL Draft to the Carolina Panthers. NFL, you made it to the big time, the show. What was that like? It was just all wide eyes, big time celebrity stuff when I got there, man. You know, we brought in, I think, 20 new players to the Panthers and just revamped the whole team. So it was an amazing experience. Third 
third sack of the game for Hardy. Being a defensive end in the NFL to me is one of the hardest positions. <laughs> if you're going up against these 350 pound offensive linemen, and you got to get to the quarterback and you got to take their head off. Okay. What was your secret weapon? How, why were you so successful getting to that quarterback? I think for me, man, it was just speed and mentality. I never got that big first round draft pick. I never got that big fame endorsement from the coaches or the fans. So I was always the guy that outworking the competition. But it was his life off the field that would cause trouble on the field. You finish with Carolina, you have an opportunity with Dallas. But before you went to Dallas, you had a couple little hiccups in the game. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, some craziness happened. He was convicted during the first trial. 60 day suspended sentence, 18 months probation on misdemeanor charges. Hardy appealed the conviction and the case against him was dismissed. Ended up being very innocent. Case got thrown out and uh, had to sit out a year. My team chose not to what support me. What was that me. like being frustrated? That knowing you can't be with your teammates? Well, you know, the worst part for me was when my team didn't have my back. You know, they kind of left me out there. The bus. Yeah, you know, they kind of put put me to the side, decided to not even investigate. Support so, you. Yeah, and, and that was the worst part for me, man. But I ended up, you know, focusing back on my work, getting an opportunity with the Cowboys. So, you know, it was a transition into something huge for me. Here comes Hardy on Brady, and he's got the sack. Dallas Cowboys, your dream job. You get to Dallas. What happens? My fame went through the roof. Some of the best fans in the country, in the world, man, honestly all got behind me, all supported me, and uh, I started building a brand. Just as Hardy's star power started to rise again, his career was cut short by another unexpected event. Former Dallas Cowboys defense veteran Greg Hardy has been arrested on a drug chart. Inside there, something there's a, like a purple, so we find a bag and a small bag. I don't know what that stuff is. When the season ended, the Cowboys decided not to re-sign Hardy. His pro football career thus came to an end. Um, I guess I feel like it's, it's just a bad break. I mean, you, you've seen other people get second chances in third and fourth, so um, I wonder why not him, you know? Jerry Jones calls you in the office in the season and says, Greg, you know, we don't have a place for you on the roster. Yes, what sir. was that like? It was crazy, you know? Um, I come from getting blackballed for the whole year, getting to the Cowboys, and then I'm back in the same position again. And it's like I got to reevaluate, you know? And after, what, six months, seven months, I kind of like started thinking to myself like, hey man, it's time to go back to old, old dreams and get back to competing, you know, because inside I'm a competitor. Right. Like, I, I have to be the best. I wanted, I wanted that yellow jacket, the Hall of Fame, and to not be able to chase that anymore was hurting. With his NFL career seemingly finished, Hardy looks to reinvent himself. My name's Greg Hardy. I'm 29 years old. I'm fighting out of American Top Team, Coconut Creek. I'm here to prove that I belong in the UFC and that I can make it. Oh man, I got a lot of goals. Stack that bread and buy my nose. Anything is possible. So, your NFL career was great, but you have a new career now, okay, which is an amazing career. It's international, okay? You've got fans all over the world. You're in the UFC. How did you get involved in fighting? Funniest story ever. So, I already thought about fighting. You know, I was looking for the dream. I wanted to play basketball overseas. I wanted to be a fighter. So I go find a gym. I find an agent. I ended up convincing somebody to let me move in the ATT's dorm. Really? And I ended up living, I lived in ATT's dorm for one and a half years, training, getting kicked in the face, beat up by Andre Arlovsky, Junior De Santos. It was just a constant whooping for about a year and a half, man. And then started picking it up, developing, keep coming back, keep showing up. And then finally Dean Thomas says, hey man, what are you doing here? Like, do you not have a fight? And he goes and talks to my agent and they found me a fight. After Hardy's first amateur win, Greg finds a new home in MMA. One of his trainers felt the love. He's a hard worker. He listens well. He asks the right questions. His learning curve is very short. He wants to learn. He wants to be successful. Hardy was given a once in a lifetime opportunity by the president of the UFC, Dana White, to fight in the UFC Contender Series. Part of the punch. Oh, 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 that is it! Whoa. Greg Hardy! Whoa. 
to touch gloves and we are underway. Biggest favorite on the card tonight is Greg Hardy at minus 700 and looking to handle things quickly. Big right hands landing from Hardy. Throws in a knee. How long can Gordon withstand this? He can't. Handsome guy could be on, on a magazine cover. All right, you could be in the movies. Why would Greg Hardy, you know, pretty boy want to be in the ring? Well, I'm a, I'm a ferocious competitor, you know, and I come from battling massive giants, you know, so like being in the trenches is, is as about a war, as war as you get, so it's kind of in my nature. I just, I, I love competing and there is no more higher level of competition than walking into a ring with another man and coming out and seeing who's the best. This guy, this guy paid his dues. Mm -hmm. He lost everything. Mm -hmm. He's been building himself up for the last mm -hmm. five years. He's done everything a human being is supposed to do. Right. And, and here he is. My chief A.O. Greg, Prince of War, Hardy! Congratulations, man. First UFC win, first round knockout. You made it look easy here tonight. I know how much work you have put in. Got to feel pretty good with the effort you put in here tonight. Feels amazing, man. I just want to say thank you, Florida. I love y'all all, man. I moved here. Thank you, American Top Team. Coach Marco, Coach Jolly, Coach Billy, Coach Dean, Dan Lambert, man. Thank you for my chance. I love y'all so much, man. So now you're running your record up and you're, you're knocking out guys. 30 seconds, one minute. These guys are getting dropped. Craig, Prince of War Hardy. That's illegal. And immediately that the referee illegal. intervenes. That is an illegal knee. And that's it. Greg Hardy is disqualified. That means it is his first professional loss. I learned exactly what I was expected to learn from Alan Crowder in our fight. I needed to get better. I'm a beginner, I'm a rookie. This, this game is new to me. Had a couple losses, what was that like? Eye-opening. You know, you go through, what, like six fights. Like, my first one, I had no idea what I was doing. You make a mistake. It kind of broke me a little bit. Um, I got to meet freaking legend Rashawn Evans come in and tell me it's okay. One of my uh, old coaches is King Mo. Uh-huh, who's very good friends with Rashad. Yeah, yes. and um, literally King Mo gave me my first pair of gloves. When I was getting destroyed, making sure I was surviving in there and, and just trying to take care of me, man. And after that accidental knee, man, everybody was calling me a cheater, a, a, a POS, and he was like, nah, man, I'm gonna, bring you, I'm gonna bring somebody in here to tell you, and I'm just like, Mo, bro, nah, man, I'm like, I, I blew it. It's over with, it's all over with. And then, you know, Rashad Evans comes in, and he's like, you need to you just chill, it's okay. Like, you're gonna be all right. Coming up on Before the Fame, Greg Hardy, still new to the UFC, will need to prove that he belongs amongst the sports elite. Hi everybody, you're watching Before the Fame and I'm your host, Mike Sherman, and I'm with UFC Hall of Famer, one of my good friends, Rashad Evans. Rashad, thank you so much for coming on my show again. Thank you, thank you. Today's show is on ex-NFL defensive end, all pro defensive end, Greg Hardy, who's now making a transition into the UFC. You are training Greg for his upcoming fights and basically resurrecting his career. Did you know he had great foot speed and, and athleticism before you took him on? Yeah, I, I know I know um, from him from football, but I didn't really understand how much that truly transferred over because a lot of athletes Does it are, transfer over? Well, it did. It definitely transferred over. And, um, you know, I was just so impressed with just his ability with his footwork, but more set, more, more uh, importantly, his mindset. You know, he has such a great, strong mindset. And um, when he gets focused and when he gets his mind on something, he's, he's locked and key, like he's, he's on it. Every single time I spoke to Greg, he was just always super responsive and super appreciative. So that's what I really liked about Greg. And um, I, I just, I, I knew at that point, he really, really was a fighter. There was so much expectation on Greg because of where he came from in football sure. and stuff like that. And there was a lot of pressure on him, you know? So um, I understood that part, but I didn't really fully get to, to know it until I started to work with him. And then once I started to work with him, I started to understand, you know, like, okay, what areas that, that I can help him be stronger at. And, I, and, and what I decided on, you know, is that, you know, every single fighter, what I call, they have to make, they have to have self-mastery. And when you have start to have self-mastery in your skill and your domain and, and putting your tools together, then that's when you, you become 
uh, on another level as an athlete. And I'm just trying to help him organize his toolbox so he knows that he's the true master. Coming up on Before the Fame, Greg reflects on his past as he looks to build on his future. While Greg Hardy has had a troubled past with many ups and downs, it is his resilience and patience that carry him to this day. If you had any advice to give him, okay, to make him a better fighter from what you've seen so far, training him in the ring, what would it be? Be you, you know, be your best friend, not your worst enemy. You know, trust yourself, love yourself, have faith, and be relentless, never give up and make the mark. This is your legacy. It's not how you start in life, it's how you finish. A lot of us, we all have demons. We all have issues, it's how we deal with them. We're all gonna be judged one way or another. It's whether they're doing at the end what matters. You have an aura about you, but a lot of the people out there that know you from football, they don't see that. Well, yeah. They don't. They don't. They don't know Greg Hardy who, really, who Greg Hardy is. They don't know the smile. They don't know the heart. They don't know that. They just see that negative press out there that just kind of like radiates. I mean, you need to change all that. Yeah, you know. And this, hey, and thank you for having me on. Cause this is a part of that. And because in, in NFL, man, people don't understand. It's a it's entertainment business. And my my uh, personality was the Kraken. I was the devil's pet. Yeah. You know, and that's what they saw, the eye paint, the eye black, yeah. black. Yeah. You know, they saw a yeah. monster because that's what I had to be to go fight 350 pound dudes every single day. But like, uh, when you take that off, when you go home, you know, I'm still a dad, I'm a son, I'm all these things. And that's what, that's what you know, you see when you're not on the field or in the cage. What kind of person is Greg Hardy? Greg's an amazing person. He's uh, a very sweet dude, man. And it sounds crazy to say, but he's, he's, a, he's a very sweet guy, like a, like a teddy bear, man. Very caring, genuine. And um, one thing I, I like about Greg is the fact that he speaks to people, he makes eye contact with them, he makes people feel important. To me, that means more to me, and that, that says more to me about someone's character than anything else, because when, when you're willing to go out your way to uplift every single person and be that person to everyone, then that means that you're, you're coming from a true place of, of understanding who you are and understanding how, you, how your impact impacts other people. Greg Hardy's childhood dream of being one of the greats is still alive and well to this day. Greg has always been a freak. He, I mean, even from high school, basketball and football. I don't even think you guys have seen him play basketball, but he's like he's always had that footwork and that, that explosion. And I mean, it's just talent. I mean, he he has it. What if you got a call from San Diego Chargers or the New York Jets, and they're like, "Please come. We need you. We want you. We're rebuilding." What would you do? For the right amount of money, you can't pass that up. It's it's it is one of the best feelings ever. But I, like, I, you can't really think about that. And I, I have I had no desire to do it just simply because like I'm having so much fun over here and I am excited about what I can do. What have you learned in your short career in the NFL and UFC so far over the years about, about life? Patience and uh, understanding. You know, the fact that we all gotta keep going, the fact that you know, you're gonna make mistakes, but make them intelligent. Don't make them more than once. And being happy, trying to spread love and joy, man and do the entertainer thing for everybody, you know, because you only get one of these. Let's go! So, where do you see him going in this UFC? I see Greg going to the top, man. I think that Greg has so much potential in so many ways. And um, what's amazing about Greg is the fact that you know, we're still discovering so much about him, you know, and, and I feel he's discovering so much about himself because, you know, every single week he comes in here, he he unfolds a new wrinkle. And I'm just like, damn, I didn't even he realize. Works. He works, he works hard. With continued focus and discipline, Greg Hardy just may go down as the greatest former NFL player, UFC fighter ever. 
it's not it's not about worrying about the negativity it's worrying about the positivity and the things that are going good because people don't get these opportunities this is a cruel and messed up world and for me to get this opportunity to move forward and go on and actually thrive is amazing and to to not appreciate it and to not actually actively show and be happy and show appreciation for it i think is, is bs to focus on the negativity would be me disrespecting God, disrespecting Dana, disrespecting this organization. Do you see him to move on to this sport as a, as a champion? Without a doubt. I, um, he has the capability, he has the skills, he has the traits of, of a world, world champion. Where do you think Greg Hardy's legacy is? If people mention Greg Hardy, what, what do you want them to remember about you after the game, after the fights, after everything is finished? Hands down, without a doubt, the greatest cross sport generational athlete of all time. I'm a defensive end, I'm a receiver, I'm a basketball player, I'm a fighter, I'm a boxer, I'm a, I am everything. You know, there's not a lot of athletics that I can't accomplish through hard work, you know, and I don't do it because I'm talented. I do it because I'm willing to put it in the work and I'm willing to excel where you want. Greg, congratulations. You're a father and yes, you're sir. a husband. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Well, guys, that's our show for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. But tune in for next week's show, where once again, we go down memory lane of some of the biggest names in sports, music, and entertainment, all before the fame. And don't forget to send us your video questions at www.beforethefame.tv. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mike Sherman. Thanks for watching.